Maybe I'll just finish with this problem right here. Uh, so we have a triangle ABC. Uh, D lies on the bisector of angle BAC. All right. Actually, let me draw the bisector. Um, so BD and AC meet at E. And CD and AB meet at F. I think this, this point D should look, uh, oh no, it should look blue. Um, the circumcircle of ABC intersects EF at P and Q. Uh, all right. That's P. This is Q. O is the circumcenter of DPQ. So here's where it gets tricky. Uh, I'm going to erase some of the excess lines here. All right. Uh, hold on just a second. Actually, let, let me meet it. Let, let me let it meet the circle at another point. Okay, so O is the circumcenter of DPQ. Yeah, so this is going to be a big circle. So I'm going to adjust the diagram a little bit. We're going to want something more like, uh, let me move it, move it to the side here. Whoops. I'm back. Ah, hey, Timo. Uh, so I think this is going to be our final problem. Um, I'm trying to make the diagram look uh, clean. Let's see. I'm going to make ABC like a small triangle. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, this looks so silly. Uh, what if? It, let's see if ABC is a tall triangle. Yeah, I want ABC to be a tall triangle, but I want it to be like minimized just so that. The diagram fits on the figure. Ah, that looks good. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, O is the circumcenter of triangle DPQ. All right. Uh, we want to show that OD is perpendicular to BC. All right. Looks true. So just to catch Timo up, um, ABC is, is any triangle and D is any point on the angle bisector. And CD, uh, BD and CD meet the sides of it at E and F. And then we let EF meet the circle at P and Q. And then we let O be the circumcenter of PDQ. And we want to show that OD is perpendicular to BC. All right.
Hmm. What can we do here? Is, is AH perpendicular to PQ? I don't think it is. I think that would be very unlikely, but yeah, no, AH is not perpendicular to PQ. Now, what if I draw a triangle that looks like this? Just trying to find ways to make the figure look nice. I think that's fine. So, yeah, I'm kind of thinking about trig Cheva. I'm not actually going to use it, but if I did use it, these two angles are equal. So, oh, hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. D can be any point on the angle bisector. Just move things around a little bit. Hmm. Not sure how to begin here. Yeah, so I wonder if we could drop a perpendicular from D to BC and then show that that point is collinear with O. Um, I'm going to try that. Oops. Ah, I'm going to do this. There we go. Call it J. Actually, why not H? So H is the perpendicular from D to BC. And I want to show that D, H, and O are collinear. So that would be the same as saying angle BDH is 180 minus uh, BDO. I don't know if that does much. So yeah, I'm just going to write this out, see where it goes. Um,
Yeah, I'm not really sure. Hmm. Yeah, how do we use the angle bisector condition? I feel like it might help to extend these two lines. I don't know if it will. Um, just playing around with stuff. Is that point? Oh, whoops. Hmm. So it's it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, we want to show DH passes through O. What if that were true? So I'm, I'm going to hide O for a sec. Um, what if we let like DH meet the big circle at L? Whoops. We want to show that uh, DL is a diameter. So we want to show Yeah, I mean, so that would mean that LP and LQ are tangents to the circle. Okay, I kind of like that actually. I'm going to delete these segments for now because I'm not sure how useful they are. Um, but basically, we want to show that LP and LQ are tangents to the circle. Um, so we want to show that PQ is the polar of L. So if but if P and Q, so if PQ was the polar of L, then that would mean that E and F lie on the polar of L. So L would lie on the polar of E and F. Why we want to show that LQ is tangent to the circumcircle of ABC? Or, or why do we want to show that LP and LQ are tangent to the circumcircle of ABC? I um, get it. Um, it's, it's basically because, so um, basically we want to show that DH passes through O, right? Um, 
But if dH passes through O, then that's the same as showing dL as a diameter, right? Oh, no, that, that's not necessarily true. Yeah. No, I, that would be true if D is the set. No, you're right, uh, Timo. Like, yeah, they're not necessarily tangent. That's my bad. All right, I'm just going to erase. I'm just going to go back to what I had before. But yeah, it seems like an interesting problem. There has to be something we're missing. How can we relate angle PQD to the condition that D lies on the bisector? Oh, PQD in terms of the angles of the triangle. Yeah, maybe we want well, okay, so basically we want to show angle PDQ is 180 minus half of POQ, right? Or, or we, we know that. Um Can you meet CF and BE again with the circumcircle of PDQ? Uh, yes. Yeah. And now, is it possible that? I, J, B, and C are concyclic? Yeah, they are. Maybe we could show that like by the radical axis theorem. I don't know. I never thought about using Cheva. I don't know why, but basically Cheva, yeah, like I feel like we can use Cheva's theorem on triangle ABC uh, with point D. Um, but what 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 made you think about I, J, B, and C being cyclic? I thought if we extend H, D, and meet it with the circumcircle of P, D, Q, mm -hmm. and then um, if L, J, B is 90 degrees. We know that L, J, B, H is cyclic. Ah. I see what you're saying. So, so uh, basically, if the problem were true, L, J, B, H is cyclic, and L, I, H, C is cyclic. Yes. And so we'd kind of have a radical axis theorem, it looks like. Um, 
Well, that basically means J, C, I, B, and L, H concur. Uh, does, wait, try something. Whoops. Maybe we could like use Pascal's theorem or something. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, it feels kind of a lot like Pascal's theorem, but I'm not sure. So if that were cyclic, that would mean BD times DJ is equal to DH times DL, right? I think maybe we can do something like if i, j, b, and c are cyclic, we can let the circumcircle of b, h, j meet h, d in a point, and the circumcircle of c, h, i made h, d in a point, and then we know because of power of a point that these two points have to be the same and then this point has to lie on the circumcircle of PDQ. Okay, so you're saying that once we once we show I, J, B, C is cyclic, we could use kind of some power of a point radical axis arguments to, sh to solve the problem is kind of what you're saying, right? Yes, I think. All right, I'm gonna try that. I'm just going to hide this for now. Let's see if, um, yeah, how can we show BCIJ? Um, can we use power of a point? Uh, BD times DJ. Maybe you want to try to show uh, IJ, P, Q. And BC concur. Concur. Yeah. I like it. So. I wonder if, uh, yeah, there's anything like with harmonic conjugation. Uh, Hmm. Is um will, will B C G and that point have to be in harmonic conjugation, right? So Basically, we're saying, I mean, another way of saying it is, is um, if we let i, j, so I'm going to hide here. If we let i, j meet b, c at a point m, we want to show that m, b, c, and g are in harmonic conjugation. I wonder. 
If that's true, then MA should be perpendicular to AD. Yes. I Is think DA the angle bisector of JDI? Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't think that would be true. You're saying is DA the angle bisector of JDI? Yes, but never mind. I think it isn't true. <laughs> okay. Um, but I think um, Ann Mall, a rich wall in the comments, had an interesting idea. Is angle MAD 90? Uh, we could check it. See. Yes. So if we can, yeah, because because AG is an angle bisector. So if we can show angle MAG is ninety, then that solves the problem. Hmm. I wonder if we could do some kind of projection. So what if uh, what if those four points were in harmonic conjugation, M, B, C, and G? If we projected through D, um, check the comments. Uh, how would it solve the problem if we showed they were in harmonic conjugation? Um, so basically, oops. So we're trying to show that IJCB is cyclic. Uh, if we could show that IJ, um, EF, and BC concurred at a point, then that would prove that IJCB is cyclic because we could use power of a point a bunch of times. Um, and then Pimo was saying, once we know IJCB is cyclic, then he has an idea of how we could finish off the problem. Um, all right. Okay, so let's suppose that B, C, M, and G actually were in harmonic conjugation. Can we project through something? Project through point B onto the circle. Let me see, let me draw MD. We can try to use the midpoint of arc BC on the side with A. Okay. Uh, what was your idea there? M, A, and N have to be collinear. And ah. I think I, A, N, and J are concyclic. All right. But I have no proof.
Yes. Yeah, so so yeah. Um, because angle MAG is 90 degrees, it's the same as saying that MA and N are collinear. Um, Okay, so yeah, let's see if we can prove that I, A, and J is cyclic. Uh, So I had a different idea that it seems a little, I'm just gonna try it out for a second. I wonder if VM is parallel to PQ. No, that's not true. No, it can't be because yeah. You're saying we have to use the fact somewhere that M lies on IJ. That's what he's saying. Um, but but I, but I think I think using projective geometry. Using projective geometry, we might be able to do that. So we want to show that B, C, M, and G are in harmonic conjugation. If we project those four points through V, then we want to show that I, J, R, and, and this intersection point are in harmonic conjugation. So we want to show IJRF is a harmonic quadrilateral. Um, and then maybe we could project through something else. I just like harmonic quadrilaterals in general because I feel like often they're very useful. I'm not sure if it'll work here. Um, Midpoint of BC. Yeah, so we want to show IJBC is cyclic. Whoops. I know I'm making the diagram messy. Let's let's get rid of point R.
So you could show I, J, M, and R are in harmonic conjugation. Uh, Oh, so that's the same as showing that R relies on the polar of M. Let, let, let me try drawing some tangents. A, D, X, G. What is X? X is intersection of A, D, and E, F. Yeah. Um, EFBC. So, so I understand what you're saying about ADX and G are harmonic. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think how to finish this off. Um, I'm going to delete some stuff to make it look a little nicer. Yeah, is there anything else we can, yeah, I've kind of used, I mean, I'm sure there's probably a solution that doesn't use projected geometry, but yeah, I've just been trying to sort of kill it with it here. Um, Yeah, let me draw the tangents from M to the big circle. Uh, we're saying R should lie on that tangent. I wonder if there's like a concurrency.
Yeah, this looks like a tricky one. Let's work on it for just a couple more minutes and then I think we'll stop. Um, I like Timo's idea though, trying to show that I, uh, J, B, C is cyclic. Uh, B, B, C and P, B, Q. Good try that. Yeah, do we want to show that that's collinear with uh, M? Maybe that would help. I'm not sure if that's true. It looks true. Uh, is that true somehow by the radical axis theorem? Hmm. Yeah, if, if, the, if the problem were true, then M, D, and S would be collinear. So, so is it true that B, C, wait, so by the radical axis theorem, B, C, Yes, and DQ are collinear. Yeah, I feel like Cheva, I'm just seeing how Cheva would work. BDC, maybe redefine M so that it's the intersection of NA and BC. Yeah, so yeah, we know we know all these lines are concurrent. NA, PQ, DS, and BC. Um I wonder if somehow we can use the angle bisector theorem. So AE over AB is BD over DE. So we could express BD in terms of the others. Let me try this out. I'm gonna see where this goes. So I'll just leave it like that for now. We want to show that BD times DJ is CD times DI. Um, is it possible that AR is the angle bisector of JAI? Ah, that would be interesting. Let's see. Yes, that looks like it is true. 
Uh, let me just move the figure around just to confirm, but it looks, feel pretty confident. Yeah, that is the case. Have you any idea how to prove this? I do not. Was there something that made you think of it or uh, did you just, it looked like it might be true and so you, you wanted to check it out? Hmm. If we know it's that this is true, then if we can show that N lies on the per perpendicular bisector of IJ, then I, A and J, are cyclic. Are cyclic. Yeah, so that would solve the problem. Yeah, because if we could show that AR is the angle bisector of IAJ, then yeah, it would solve the problem because that would mean. Um, oh, actually, and, I'm not. And sure. we have to show that M lies on the perpendicular, perpendicular bisector of IJ. These two things we have to show. Yeah. Is I wonder if N is the circumcenter of I yes. J B. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So N N we want to show is the circumcenter. Yes. <laughs> okay. This is looking interesting. So we have an exact point that we have to show is the circumcenter of a quadrilateral that we have to prove is cyclic. Can we show that D, C, J, and A are cyclic? Uh, D, C, J, and A? Uh, it looks possible. Yes. <laughs> wow. So D, C, J, A. Uh, that seems like it could be power of, yeah, that's, I think that might just be power of a point. Yeah, that's true by power of a point. Because, because uh, DE times DJ is PE times EQ is AE times AC, right? Yes, and uh, yeah, I think now we are done because now we know um, DAC Mm -hmm. is equal to DJC and BID is equal to BAD and because AD is the uh, the angle bisector of mm -hmm. BAC angle BIC is angle BJC all right so i am going to start uh writing this out Sounds good. So, oh, 
Okay, so we have AE times EC is equal to PE times EQ, which is equal to DE times EJ. So that means ADCJ is cyclic. And then uh, similarly, ADBI is cyclic. All right. So then um, does the radical axis theorem prove that so what was the next step i forget we make an angle chase and oh yeah that's right i remember um So angle um, ABC, or I'll write it this way, angle BJC is equal to angle BJC is equal to angle BAC equal BAB angle BIB Let's see if that all fits in one line. Yes. So B I J C is cyclic. All right. Um, and then we can kind of do. Did, so was your next idea let H D meet the circle at a point, and then. Um, uh, I think we let HD meet the circumcircle of BHJ in a point. Okay, so I'm going to hide that bigger circle, but basically, so we draw the circumcircle of BHJ. Um, So this is kind of your idea? Yes. Right. And whoops. And now by power of a point, um Z, H, I, and R are concyclic. Uh, H, I, R, and did you say Z? Yes. Uh, what is Z? Oh, C, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm I, J, E, F, and B, C are concurrent. Ah, okay. So Ann, so Ann Mall says he has a different solution. I'm going to um, show his in the end. First, I'm going to finish up this one, um, but I'm very curious. So, um, I'm sorry. So, Um, so what were you... So I'm sorry, can you continue with that again, Timo? By power of a point, we know R, I, H, and C are concyclic. Okay. 
um, because we could show that DC times DI is HD times, oh, cause then, cause then DC times DI is DB times DJ. Yeah, okay. So, uh, hold on just a second. I'm gonna write this all out. Oops. So you're showing BCIJ is cyclic? Yeah, okay. So Okay, sorry. Just give me a second. All right, so I be uh, I I H C R cyclic. All right. And now because angle DIR is angle RJD is 90 degrees, we know E, D, J, and R is cyclic. Okay. I, B, I, D, J, and R. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to draw that for a sec. Um, I'm just going to put that there. Um, and our ID is 90 degrees by the same argument. Okay, I'll just leave it right there. Um, and uh, that means that, so P and Q, the, the way we defined I and J, that means um, basically R, I, P, D, Q, and J all have to lie in a circle. Okay, 
And if that's true, uh, I don't think, I think we, that all makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna delete this point S just for now. Um, actually, I'll just leave it there in case it's used in Ann Mall's idea. Um, but that means that, well, well, once we knew that RIDJ was cyclic, um, well, okay, this means that RD is a diameter of the, the circumcircle of BPR. So, And then that solves the problem. I'm sorry, it should be DPQ. That means that OD is perpendicular to BC. All right, now before I finish, I'm just gonna look at what Ann Mole had to say in the chat. Um, be his idea for the solution. We only need that BJIC is cyclic. After that, angle. So for Raffaello, H was the perpendicular from D to BC. Um, and um, Angle RJD is equal to RJL. Uh, I'm not sure what L is. RJL or RJI plus IJD. I, I think Anmol has a different way to do the angle chase uh, to get to the final conclusion. I think I think he's saying that um, we can do some kind of an angle chase to show that angle RJD is 90 degrees. But I am just going to leave it right here for now. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording. Um, for all the listeners on YouTube, thanks for watching. And uh, if you'd like to join me, like I said, um, feel free to email me. I'm going to put my email.